Welcome back to The Christian Beat. Today we're here at We Rock Studios in Franklin, Tennessee, and so happy to be sitting down with Sean B. Man, I am blessed to be here with you guys. This is great. Thank you for having me on. We're having a great day with you so far. Uh, I wanted to ask you, the last time that we caught up with you, it was re- earlier this summer, around the time of the release of Step Into My Story. Yeah. I'm just kind of curious how you've seen that song come alive over these last few months. Man, it has it has been incredible. That song was just such a, it, it really stretched me. Um, it, it was a growing song for me. It stretched me you know, lyrically, emotionally, you know, digging deep and um, just vocally, all, all of the fun stuff. Um, getting to write with Tony Wood was an incredible blessing that really stretched me um, just from a, a writer's perspective. Um, I learned so much from him and the people that I was able to collaborate on that song with. Um, so just kind of seeing that develop over the summer was awesome. And it was really something that helped open up a lot of doors, get, you know, people to listen and, you know, just something that was a great first step you know I, I moved out to Tennessee about a year ago and if there was you know I wouldn't take another way to make that first step in you know that that was such a blessing to to get into the scene with that song and this summer I know you spent a lot of time on the road festivals and conferences I'm just kind of curious on that journey what did you learn about yourself on that journey <laughs> Oh, that, that I, I just love this, <laughs> you know, I, I, I knew that I did, but it was just something that, you know, they say, be careful what you pray for and, and all of that. And just every day God reminded me like, Hey, this is what you prayed for. And even in, even in the stressful times, God reminded me like, this is, this is like what you're allowed to do, you know, like count everything as a blessing in the stressful things. Like these are the things that you're stressed out about be happy about that. You know, these are the things that you get to celebrate. Be happy about that because these are all of the things that you prayed for. And so, you know, I've just been sharing that message so much with everybody because everybody has different goals and dreams and aspirations that we pray for. And it almost seems like, you know, sometimes when we get them, it's like we become accustomed to the good things in our life Mm -hmm. and we start to take them for granted, you know, And, Mm -hmm. and it doesn't even have to be like this big grand dream that you want to do with your life it could be something as as like every day as family the family that you prayed for the friends that you prayed for um you know just the different things that you prayed for they're so good but they're so good all the time that we start to take them for granted and so for me what i learned is you know just just remember that this is what god has blessed you with and be thankful for it whether it's good right now or whether it's not great right now it's still yours right now and so you know be thankful for that i love that i love that You know, talking about your time on the road, I can't help but notice the energy, the high energy (laughs) that you bring to the stage. And I'm just kind of curious, where does that come from? Man, uh, so (laughs) it it started it started young, man. I grew up in church and uh, we just we just had that like traditional gospel choir where, you know, shout in and clap in and, you know, just dancing in the aisles, all that all that fun stuff. Right. And so that music and that that style of worship was just always like put in me from a very young age. And, um, and I grew up listening to, to the upbeat guys like Toby Mac and Family Force 5 and stuff. And I, one thing that I really love and that I wanted to make sure that my music did was I wanted to translate joy. And so that energy just comes from like, man, I, I just feel so much joy when I'm able to, to do that. And when I'm able to speak the things that I'm able to speak over people, you know, when I'm able to tell people, hey, you didn't come this far just to come this far, like the joy that that I feel being able to deliver that message to somebody um, is is incredible. And so the energy comes from just like, I, I just love this. <laughs> you know? I love it. How about a pre-show routine? What would moments before you get on stage look like? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a long it's a long warm up. Actually, it's it's a long pre-show. Um, what I what I do, you know, I'll do my, my vocal warm up and stuff. And um, I, I will pray before I go up and it's it's always a prayer it's kind of kind of a three-step prayer and it just kind of in stages it's you know um god go before me you know prepare the hearts prepare the minds you know prepare bring the people here that need to be here you know the ones that want to have fun yes but the ones that are going to hear this message the ones that are going to be softened up by the fun and then the message is going to drive home prepare their hearts for that their minds for that to receive that Um, and then it's be with me like you know when I speak when I sing like let people hear you when I speak let people see you when I move let people feel you when I shake their hand just you know whatever it is just shine through me you know be there with me and then remain after me it's like let this mean something besides just a concert afterwards it's got to mean something it's got to stick it's got to last and that's that's pre-show pre-recording pre-interview pre-anything it's that's that's the routine going in is just you know 
getting back to that place of humility and saying like, God, this is, this is all because of you and this is all for you. And when I'm done with this, it will all still be you. And so just, you know, I think that, that re- returning to that place is such an important part of, um, you know, staying passionate and, and just remembering why you're doing it. You're so intentional. Be- De- definitely. It's, it's got to be on purpose. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I love that. Yeah. It has to be. Absolutely. And let's talk too about those moments after you've been on stage. What do those moments post-show look like for you? Yeah, man. So like I said, you know, growing up being a fan, I always loved it when my favorite artists would like spend time intentionally with me and, you know, let me tell, talk to them about the things that, you know, were important to me and just kind of share and, you know, tell them how much I love the show. Like I always love when people took time to do that. And so for me, you know, we, we jump off, congratulate the team, high fives, quick, thank you, God prayer. And then we're right out there spending time with people. Um, something that is so encouraging to me is, um, when people come up and share their stories of what God's done in their life. Um, and I, I don't think that people realize really how encouraging that is when they do that. Um, because one, it's important to you. And so, you know, to, to care and to love, like that's important to me as well. But the other thing that that does is it serves as a reminder to me and the rest of the team, like God is working everywhere. Like it's, it's not like life's not just about you, you know, like God is doing something incredible in so many people's lives all at once. And it reminds you that he truly is the God of that will do the impossible. And the God that is just working miracles like every day, whether we see them or not, like somebody's life is being changed by God every day. And so it just serves as that reminder. And uh, so it's, it's encouraging and it's incredible and it's a lot of fun getting to meet those people. Can you share some of those testimonials or maybe themes from what you've heard? Yeah. So I, man, the the craziest one, man, I, I met this, I met this lady who shared that uh, she was uh, part of like a a Satanist um, religion, I I guess. Um, And she was kind of working her way up in the ranks and she was getting, you know, to be that person of power. Mm -hmm. And um, within a year, God took both of her sons. She, she lost both of her sons. And uh, just random, you know, freak accidents. And after the first one, she said, you know, I, I was hurt, but I thought, you know, I did something wrong in my ritual and in the things that I was doing. And so I tried to get better at what I was doing. And I tried to learn more about the direction that I was going on. And uh, she said, okay, well, now I have control of this. Now it's not going to happen again. And then she lost her other son. And, you know, losing two sons all, all within the same year. And she was like, and it devastated me because I gave everything that I had to make sure that I had control of this, that I wasn't going to let this happen again. And it happened anyway. And so then it just blew the top off of her whole world of like, this isn't what I think that it is. And so she, you know, she's searching and she actually, um, she shared her, she wrote two books about it actually. And she shared them with me and they were just like powerful powerful reads it's a it's a crazy testimony um and so that's probably the wildest one that i was like wow like that is that is like ultimate submission to god of saying like you were right i was wrong and i'm gonna move forward and and not only did she move forward with her life but she moved forward and shared her story she shared her testimony in hopes that it would impact other people's lives you know and saying hey this is what happened to me this is what I've been through, but this is what God has turned me into. Um, And so, you know, not only the fact that she's made it through that, but the fact that she is now helping others get through that life as well is, is incredible. Wow. What a story. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Crazy. The music is making a difference and there's a bigger plan at play. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. What a powerful story. Yes. You know, we've been talking about touring and and concerts. And so I definitely want to ask you, I know there's a big announcement that just came out about what what is to come. Tell us and share that announcement with us. Yeah, man. So when I got when I got word about this, I could not even believe it. Um, You know, I I uh, I moved out to Tennessee last year from Colorado. And when I left, my my friends and I we were like, oh, man, I, you just imagine what could happen. It's crazy. You know, they're like, bro, we're praying for you. We're praying God does this. And one of them was like, oh, man, what if you were on uh, what if you were on Winter Jam one day? That would be crazy. And I was like, oh, dude, we're probably like years away from that. That would be crazy. But I, I love it. But it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. It's like, well, we'll be praying for you, man. And then, um, you know, just just recently we get word in. It's like, hey you got a spot on winter jam for 2023. And I was just like, come on, like <laughs> stop. Um, it, it was crazy because it was something that, you know, 
you work so hard at what it is that you feel called to, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's what you, you eat, sleep, breathe it all the time. And, um, and you have these prayers that you pray. And, and for me, it was kind of a test. It was kind of a, a learning experience for me because I, I would pray for this and I, I would pray for doors like that to be open. But then in, you know, in my worldly mind, in my not super spiritual mind, I'm like, yeah, that's what I pray for. But I mean, what are the chances of that happening? And of course, like I said earlier, God is the God that does the impossible. And um, he just, he made a way for that to happen. And so 2023, um, I'll be a featured artist on Winter Jam. And um, it's been prep for, you know, it, it's been crazy busy with prep and stuff like that. But uh, even flashing back to what I said earlier than that is you count it all as a blessing and you get excited about it because these are the things that we prayed for. This this busy and crazy and stuff like that. It, you know, we, we can't let it be inconvenient or anything because this is everything that you prayed for. And so I'm super excited about it. Um, there's going to be incredible artists on that tour. Um, I just can't wait to learn from them, learn from their experience, learn from, you know, the things that they've seen work well, the things that they wish that they would have done better. Like I'm, I want to learn, I want to grow on that. And like I said earlier, I want to meet people, you know, I can't, can't wait to talk to people and, and hear more stories about what God's done in people's lives. Congratulations on that news. Ah, thank you. So looking forward to seeing you on that tour. Thank Cannot you. wait. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. You know, we're looking forward, and I I want to look even a little closer than that and ask about your Christmas single that's coming out. Yeah. Kind of tell me a little bit about the heart behind that song. Yeah, so it's called The Loudest Sound, and it it tries in the best way that we could to just show the incredible way that God works. There's so much contrast in the songs. What You know, the, the lyric of it is, you made the loudest sound on a silent night. You made the mountains bow with an infant's cry. We were impatiently waiting, but you were right on time. You made the loudest sound on the silent night. And, and it's just the contrast of like, God changed the world. God did the biggest thing for the world through the smallest thing that we know, you know, through the most fragile thing in, you know, in the form of, of a newborn baby, like coming down and, um, the, and the loudest sound, the way that that impacted the world, um, it's, it's incredible. And, but that's the way that God works, you know, even, even back to, you know, faith, the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. God works in those crazy contrasts where he's, you know, he's, Jesus is fully God and fully man at the same time. And, and just the, the perfect, the perfect man, the only perfect man to ever live dies for everybody that's imperfect the only person that doesn't deserve death is the one that gets death so that the ones that do deserve it don't have it, it, it's just this whole contrast that's mind-blowing but that shows the power of god that he will literally take the furthest thing that you can think of and make it the most impactful thing and so we wanted to capture that in this song and just you know give give honor and glory to the fact that god works in those ways that we could never ever imagine um, and just, uh, you know, just how thankful and how passionate about our belief in that, that we are. What a beautiful message, beautiful lyrics. Can't yes. wait for the world to hear that song. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I'm, I'm very excited for that one to come out. Um, we had, a uh, Madeline Garcia here just on it and, uh, man, her, her voice, great voice. Uh, she really just blessed it. Um, and you know, great team of writers behind it. The producers on it were incredible. So it's, you know, it was really an awesome collaborative process and, um, you know, I'm thankful for that team for making it happen. Thinking about the holiday spirit, are there Christmas traditions or Christmas memories that kind of come to mind when you're yeah. working on this? Oh man, totally. So, so the one that uh, makes me laugh the most is always uh, my my grand. You know, everyone has a nativity scene, and we. I always laugh, like you know, you know, you grew up Christian when. Um, my grandma's nativity scene is actually all the Veggie Tales characters, <laughs> <laughs> and so that's like it, it's just like one of those weird things. It's like always my favorite thing to look forward to. Is like ah, there's a Veggie Tales nativity. Um, but one on on one of my grandparents' sides, we do this thing called favorite things, and um, it's just these real small gifts, you know, five bucks each or something like that, that um, that signifies something important to us that happened that year and so you know for me for example you know if uh if winter jam was was the coolest thing that happened this year or say moving to tennessee okay my wife and i moved to tennessee from colorado and so like everybody would get like uh, a tennessee titan shirt or like a, a coffee mug or something like that just something small that symbolizes something that was important to you and i think that's so cool because it reminds you again that you're like the world doesn't just revolve around you. Like everybody has something 
incredible going on in that year. And so to hear the things that, that people learned, that people loved, that was just a highlight of people's year, it's really cool for us to see. And it really brings us closer as a family because we get to learn the things that were of value to, you know, to everybody else in that year. And so that's probably a tradition. I mean, we've been doing that for years and uh, it's, it's grown just so important to me. And it's something that if it were ever to stop, we would carry it on in our household for sure. What an awesome tradition. I've never heard, heard that before. Yeah, it's, it, it's, uh, my grandparents came up with it and it, it was just, we've been doing it since it's, it's been really cool. That's awesome. I want to ask you too about another new song, More Than a Conqueror. I've seen some hints <laughs> yeah. on social media about yeah. it. Can you share some of the message and the plan for that song? Man, that's that's my workout song. Man, that's my gym <laughs> song. <laughs> um, man, okay, I uh, More Than a Conqueror has a special place for me for sure because when I moved out to Tennessee, I had decided that I wanted to go more the pop route, and so I'm like, I, you know, I grew up, I I started in hip hop. And when I decided I want to do the pop music, I was like, I'm not really going to do rap anymore. I don't want to be known as a rapper. I don't want to write a bunch of rap songs like that's that's I'm going to leave that kind of back in Colorado. And for some reason, I, I had this like, man, I really want to write a song that's going to I guess it's going to sound more rap. And so but it just kind of came to me. I was driving. And so I'm starting to, you know, put some voice to text down and you know putting some lyrics down and and it just kind of it kind of hit me I linked up with uh, Greg Atron my producer and I was like bro let's let's make something like this he's like okay cool we've got some old Sean B coming up Mm -hmm. I'm like yeah you know but uh more than a conqueror and uh it it turned out man about a week after that um we get a call and it's like hey there's this movie called The Good Fight that uh is getting produced and it's it's a boxing movie and um their uh their slogan talks about being more than a conqueror would you be interested in showing them your song and i'm like yeah sure why not we can send it out to them they hear it they love it and then the next thing you know like we're featured in the movie and they pick up the song to you know to kind of be you know part of it's it's in their trailer and all of that and uh so it was it was crazy that uh it worked out like that because like i said it wasn't it was something that i was going to kind of let go of and just god put that back there and i know because that came from god that there's going to be a big purpose for it there's going to be something behind that um and what it serves as is a reminder like hey you are more than a conqueror you know like there there is somebody uh far greater than anything in this world that is fighting for us and you know the, the battle has already been won and you are more than a conqueror and so you know somebody needs to hear that message somebody needs to believe that and um somebody it, it gives that energy of just like you know like when you hear that song when that drum kicks in it's like i got this let's go you know like somebody needs to feel that and so i'm excited to see what it does and i'm, I'm thankful for the good fight for allowing it to be in their film um so exciting i can't wait for that song God always has a plan and always. certainly a plan for these songs. And Sean B, we're just so excited about what you're doing now and what the future holds. And I can't thank you enough for taking the time to sit down to talk with us. I can't wait to see where this journey continues. Man, it was a blessing to be on with you guys. Thank you for a great conversation. And uh, you know, I'll be praying for you guys and your team as well. And uh, look forward to connecting with you in the future. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, sir.